Hello everyone, it's the French Troll again, back with another video. So, as you see in the title, we are going to talk about three weapons that have the same general function, but that are in three different places in the power scale. One is good, one is bad, and the other is completely overpowered. You gotta be honest. Really short intro. I know you guys are probably have brain hurt because of all the shorts. So short intro. Let's go. And the first weapon is the Frontier Justice. I gotta be careful not to say shit about this weapon, or Uncle Ben is gonna fuck me up. Anyways, the Frontier Justice is an un unlockable primary for the engineer. It's a shotgun. It's a shotgun, yes. Why did, why did I doubt? Anyways. His sets are pretty simple. It has... You only have 3 ammo in the clips, compared to the normal 6 a shotgun have. You have no random crits, so you may see where this is going. And, but, what is the upsize? You, are, you have your DPA, your basic DPA is cut in half, basically. So, what is the upside? It can be good. It is. You gain. That's because for every kill your sentry gets, you get two critical hits on your shotgun. And for each assist your sentry gets, you get one crit on your shotgun. That's pretty good. I mean, guaranteed crit on a shotgun? That's a maximum of 180 damage. Or most likely you're going to do 80 damage because you're going to shoot the sniper at the other side of the map with your crits. And the, ma the minimal damage is uh, 80. Anyways, that's pretty powerful, right? I mean, that doesn't like only have 3 ammo seems not that bad for guaranteed crits. I mean, one sentry gun at the right spot and boom! You just get a lot of crits. Well, here's the thing. You don't get the crits like that. The way you get the crits is that you build a sentry, you get kills and assists with the sentry, the sentry is dead, and then you get the crits. Yes, that means you get the that means you only get the crits once your sentry is kaboom. Otherwise, you won't get the crits. Bye bye crits. You also need to have the weapon equipped on you when your sentry is destroyed and be alive because if you're dead no crits fuck you another thing is you if you die you lose all your crits doesn't matter that you had one or 35 which is the limit the maximum you can have you lose all of them once you respawn yeah that's pretty annoying and that's pretty annoying but hey that's that's a pretty good knockoff. I mean, you can basically... You literally one-shot 7 out of the 9 classes in the game, put one of them at 20 HP, and another one at 120 HP. Which means you two-shot every classes in the game that, does, don't, that don't have overheal or any damage bo um, resistances. Which is pretty powerful. There is a new... And, I mean, as long as you don't, don't miss, you don't really need more than 3 shots in the clip. That's the thing, you don't really need that much more clip. You just shoot pew, pew, twice, you do two mid shots, everyone is dead. Also, you can have this weapon without farming or anything by having the engineer milestones achievement. I forgot which one it is, I am too lazy to look it up. So just know that in one of the milestones, I think it's the second one, you get the frontier justice. You need it to have two specific achievements. The first one asks you to um, use the guitar taunt of the Frontier Justice right after killing somebody, uh, so in the kill cam, and the other one is you have to kill someone with the guitar. Mm, yes, the, the Frontier Justice taunt is a taunt kill. I mean, I'm not surprised. That guitar ki engineer kills on that guitar, but he's, he also kills with it, literally. This weapon is very well balanced for multiple reasons. First, 
Well, as you can see, well, first of all, it's not free. It's powerful, but it's not free. You need to build a sentry, upgrade your sentry, have your sentry get kills or assist, destroy your sentry, and then you get the crits. And if you die, you lose all of them. You lose all of that. And it also plays the things of reward versus risk, costs. That means you could destroy your sentry manually to get the crits earlier. Or you can wait for your sentry to go down and then use the frontier justice. The way I like, I like to use the frontier justice, well, when I use it, is either I go battle engineer and when sentry is very easily replaceable, you get one or two crits at a time each, for each sentry. So instead of having multiple crits in one go and that takes some time, you have always one or two crits in reserve basically, which is a pretty f good thing. And fun one. Or the other one is passive aggressive. No, wait, no, 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 that's the Uncle Dane one. Um, no, Uncle Dane didn't present it in this video on the Frontier Justice, this tactic, I think. But my technique is easy. You take the Frontier Justice, you build the nest, you protect the nest. When your sentry goes dead, you rebuild the nest and you use the crits on the sen that you got of the old sentry to protect the new sentry. From spies, pyros and etc. No, pyro can do shit. Gets heavies, spies and shit like that. It's very powerful and very useful. Though this means you have to be glued to your sentry in literally all the time, which isn't the best thing and makes it so that demos and soldiers have an easier time taking you out with the sentry. And it means you can you waste crits if you decide to shoot the sticky bombs with your shotgun. So it's not a foolproof thing, but it can be useful. Now let's talk about <laughs> The Man Melter. The Man Melter is very similar. First of all, that's a huge wall of text for us. That's a huge wall of text. Damn. But here are the here are the upside and downside. So your proj the project it's a sec oh yeah it's a secondary unlockable secondary for the pyro, which is part of the Doctor Gror. Dort's Moonman pack. It's um, it's the pack that has the third degree and the eighted uh, flog in, in it. Yeah, this weapon is supposed to be used with the flog. It's never used anywhere though. The scorch is just way better. You gotta be, you gotta be honest. So your projectile. So this weapon shoots a project. This weapon's projectile goes 50% faster, so it's pretty fast. It does. It has no ammo, similar to the cow mangler in the pump sun. It has infinite ammo, but it doesn't actually reload. That's a fun fact. You don't need to reload. It also. It. It's not a real reload. It's just a cooldown more, where you have to sh wait like a second to shoot the gun again. It's not a reload because you don't put anything in the gun again or do anything with the gun. You just you shoot. You wait a second and you shoot again. That's that's it. Then here's the fun part. If you press Alt Fire, which is the right click for those who don't know, you will you will activate the suction mode. Well, you're going to suck everything around you. Kind of the opposite of an air blast. It's not actually the opposite. It's just that instead of pushing things, it takes things up. This suction, I'm going to call it that does one thing and one thing only. It extinguishes teammates. That's it. But, because it extinguishes teammates, you get 20 health back, like the no, like every other flamethrower, except the flogger. And it has no random crit. Oh, and also, where are the crits in this? Oh yeah, in, each time you, um, you suction a guy that's burning, boom, you get a crit. That's nice. Now, this weapon is bad for multiple reasons. First of all, the weapon itself, not even the statistic, but the weapon itself is hard to use. The projectile is just a bit weird because it's faster if you have if you're used to if you're used to the flare gun, you're going to have a hell of a time to use this weapon. The projectile is a bit weird and it I'm, I every time I shoot this gun, I have problems with the perspective 
of this motherfucking shit. Also, normally you have a little sound and visual to tell you you can shoot again. I'll put it on screen if I'm not if I'm uh, ain't too lazy. Uh, and if I didn't put it, uh, I'm just going to describe it. What happens that each time when you can hit, when you can shoot the gun again, it's going to do a little tink with a little spark at the point of a gun, which is the sound is extremely quiet. Good luck hearing that in the middle of a gunfight. And the spark is so small, it's almost impossible to see. But it reloads automatically when not active. Similar to the, to the flare guns, if you put them away, if you shoot, take your flamethrowers out and take your, fl your flare gun again, it's gonna be reloaded. It's, al it's already gonna be reloaded. Nice. Now, why does this weapon suck? Well, here's the thing. First of all, it's the only flare gun that don't have any effect on burning player. That means shooting in someone that's burning isn't gonna give you anything. When the detonator, the flag, uh, the detonator and um, scorch out deals mini crit and the flag on deals crits. But it also just in the it's just not really work all the time. It's very situational. The problem is that it if the enemies don't have a pyro. Um, how can I say that if the enemies don't have a pyro, it's basically useless. You need, it's the, it's the biggest problem with the weapon in my opinion, is that it's enemy reliant. If the enemy, that means the weapon itself is dependent on the enemies to work. That means if the enemies don't have pyros, this gun is literally useless except if you're using the flag and let's talk about it real quick the doctor the doctor uh, da, 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 moon pack um, in the pack it works well it works well within this pack within this um, loadout with the floganator in the third degree well not really the third degree because the third degree really doesn't Give a sh is really. I don't really see why it's here. It could have just been a weapon reskin of the stock axe, and uh, yeah. But we but, eh. Weapon reskin has always been a strange case to me. So let's just take into. Uh, let's just talk about it another day. The flock, on the other hand, works pretty well with it. The reason is because the flock doesn't have an air blast, you can still extinguish your teammate with that weapon, which is pretty bug. But, and because the weapon can have crits and is a fire weapon, that means shooting with the main melter will charge your flock, which is extremely nice. So the two weapons work good together, unfortunately the, um, the scorch rod just works better overall. Just, if a pirate uses the Floganator, they probably don't give a shit about their team burning alive, so... They probably just use the gun that's better, overall better, for fire damage. And that's the problem, it just gets outclassed. In terms of... The only case where this is ex where this gun is pretty useful is against a Scorchard Spyro. Because a Scorchard Spyro will set your team ablaze like every two and a half seconds. You'll have pretty much unlimited crits. So yeah, if you if you if you if the enemy team have a scorched pyro, I suggest take the the main melter and turn this pretty bad situation into a hellhole of fucking rain of into a hellhole of uh, crit rain. Also, one big problem with the gun is that it's a bit bugged, and that when you extinguish someone, sometime or sometime not, this this weapon is big bugged. So. When you suck, there's a little sound, but there's also a little effect that shows particles of air going in the gun. Sometimes these particles don't spawn. You can still hear the noise, but the particles won't be there, so it's a bit annoying. And the worst part is that when you extinguish teammates, sometimes, as you may have seen, if I play, if I am putting, if I got the bug, or if I even played with the man melter, as you could see, there's a B in. If I if I didn't. There's going to be an example on the screen. There's like this huge PNG explosion that pops up on your screen, which serves nothing but make you blind. You just get fucking flashbanged by helping your teammates. 
it I means each time you extinguish you help your team by extinguishing them you have a chance to getting fucking flashbanged which then that is annoying this is really annoying and frustrating to use but overall this weapon is not very good because it gets out class the it gets out classed even in its own loadout it's not the be even in this weapon set, it's not the best option. It works good in this item set, but there are still better options even for the item set. And lots... and it's dependent on the enemy team. It relies on the enemy team to have, to have pyros. So that's why this weapon is <laughs> bad, will not recommend. Next and last is... <laughs> The Diamondback. The Diamondback is an unlockable secondary for the spy. Yes, in case you don't know, you may say, what, no, it's a primary, it's a revolver. Well, yeah, well, actually, the fun fact is that spy's revolver don't count as primaries, they count as secondaries. Yeah, that's a bit weird in my opinion as well. But it's either it's a bug or it's a leftover. I think it's a bug because in the beta, Spy was supposed to have a tranquilizer gun and its primary, but it got scrapped, and so they kept the revolver and made its primary, but kept it in secondary in the fight. It's it's hard, okay? It's hard. Just know that if you make a primary token and a Spy token, they won't work together. It will just put an, um, an error message saying that there's that uh, no craft has been found. Because Spy doesn't have a primary, he has secondaries for his guns. His sapper is the sapper is his, is his secondary PDA, like the destruction PDA for the engineer, and the watches are the first PDA, similar to the construction PDA of the engineer. And the, the sky skid is its own thing, and the knife is a melee, of course. But I'll talk about Spy in other videos. Uh, I I'm planning on doing tutorials for spies and shits and maybe, maybe not, I'll do it, I don't care, I don't give a shit. Anyways, the Diamondback is an unlockable secondary for the spy. And this gun is pretty powerful, it's actually OP. No, no, no shit, it's fucking OP. And that's the problem. The Diamondback is pretty simple. You deal, you have no random crits and you deal 50% less damage which isn't that much, which is very low. I'm going to be honest, this is very low. But, for each backstab you get, or for, but you get a guaranteed crit for each backstab and building sap, sapped, you got. That means you backstab someone or you destroy a building by sapping it, boom, you get crits. You got mailed, <laughs> a boom. Pretty straightforward. And here is the problem. It's easy reward for not very high risk. The problem is that backstabbing is already high risk, high reward. Because if you kill someone, it's a one shot, but if you miss, you're basically dead. The problem is that the diamond back gives you another reward without adding any risk. You basic, it's basically a two in one. It's a two in one. High risk, double high reward, which isn't how it's supposed to go. And the 15% damage penalty, almost unnoticeable. Like, seriously, on the crit, you deal 102 instead of 100 and... How many? 120, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's 120. You lose 18 damage on the crit. Which is the maximum number of damage you, you can get. 18 damage maxed. Lost. That's nothing. I mean, hell, the Letrange has 20% damage penalty and I hardly see the difference. And no, I'm not going to make the joke that Spy has a gun. This joke has been made a thousand times already. Maybe I'll, I'll keep it for another time. Anyways. Here's my problem with the weapon. The weapon shouldn't reward you for nothing. 
Build, sapping building already gives you points and sapping building annoys the, enge in the enemy team. And I like to see that. Also, there's a bug with this weapon that makes it even more annoying. C differently to the Frontier Justice, you can actually sap building and backstab people without the diamond back equipped, go back to spawn without respawning, or pick up and take the diamond back without respawning. Just either pick it up off the ground or change before go or use the resupply locket to change your uh, your revolver to the diamond back, and you'll get all the recruit you should have gotten. Yeah. That means you can basically take any gun you want, go around stabbing people for 5 minutes, go back to spawn, pick up the diamond back, and you have basically 30 crits in your disposal. Of course nobody uses that because that's a bit... I mean, that's not very useful. But still, it's a bug that could be useful in some situation. Where you get... Where you just backstab people, you get... Scare you, so you get chased to spawn. Boom! You can get out of spawn with fucking crits and shoot them up. Of course, if you die, you lose them all. That's the same case for the man melter. Okay. I. For the, oh yeah, I forgot to. For the man melter, I. I forgot to say something about the man melter. Um, to make the weapon more balanced, I said first of all, get rid of the of the speed. It's more of a downside because it threw off your aim. Make it so it mini crits burning player. And there's a uh, wait. What what the fuck am I saying? Just just go watch weapon. I'm I'm not here to uh, to uh, make sure that good weapon or bad weapon or good OP weapon or bad weapon get good. If you want that, go wait, go watch Fish on a Sticks um, Bad Weapon Academy series. I'm not ah uh, that's not my shit. That's that's not what I mean to do. But the diamond back, I don't know if they did a video on the diamond back, but I don't know how to da how to how to damage them. The, the problem is the diamond back itself is that it rewards you for nothing basically, and that's the problem. Is that no matter what you give, it's still free. It's still free. It's basically like if the skull cutter didn't have the damage penalty, you just have you just have damage. You just have the damage bonus. You just get a reward without getting damage, without getting anything bad in return. And no random crit is not a downside. Just to be just to be clear. It's just why why would you need to farm to get guaranteed crit when you could just get random crit? And what if the crit you just shot was a random crit as well? Just wasted time. So it's just for consistency. The only weapon in the game that has random crits and guaranteed crits is the KGB. Don't ask me why, don't ask me how. For some reason, this weapon can have random crits and guaranteed crits. This is extremely dumb, but hey, I mean, I don't make the rules. I, uh, I don't really make the rules, it's not my game. Well, that's kind of the end of the video. I just wanted to talk about those weapons specifically. I, the Man Melter is a good in concept, but just doesn't work. The Diamond Back just gives is just just gives bad spies easy solution. It just gives them an easy way out. That's the thing. That's my problem, and that's the thing. It's easy to use. And that's it. It's just easy to use. You don't even need to use the weapon itself to get to get anything. But the French justice is balanced. And that's for sure. So yeah. For this weapon I don't even wanna give you a strategy. Uh, but I guess if you wanna play this uh sneaky spy, I guess. Just play spy, that's the thing. That's the thing I say also. It's it doesn't bring anything new to the table. It's just oh do your job, get even more rewarded. So that means to use the weapon you just have to play your class. That's it. Just play your class the same way you always did. 
there's no change of playstyle, tactics or anything. It's just... Oh, now you have a weapon that does more damage when you do your job. That's it. Which is bad weapon design in my opinion. Every weapon should have something different in it. You should be able to play a bit differently with every weapon. The Letranger, you want to be more sneaky. The Ambassador, you want to be more precise. Take more, take more your shots. The Enforcer, um, even though it's pretty bad, wants you to use your disguise as a bonus for your gun instead of your instead of your knife, and things like that. Like this is the one of the only weapon in the game that, having it equipped almost doesn't change anything about how you play. Anyway, um, I think I've written about 5 minutes about the same thing. I don't know how long is this video because I don't have the timer on me right now. I have Team Fortress 2 open to be sure I don't say shit about the Diamondbacks. Uh, about the weapons. But, um, yeah. If you like the video, consider subscribing. Consider liking the video. Tell me if you want any other like t types of videos. I have a video concept uh, right now. Cook I am cooking a video right now. I'm lying. I'm probably going to cook it up like two days before I, I published it. But I have an idea of a video that I have. That I had. I've had. Ah, I hate English. That I have had for about a year or two now. Don't ask why. Just don't. Anyways, ring the bell and. I'll see you on the battlefield.